Hey everyone, today's video is just going to be a short one. I just want to go over a couple of tips when you're working on your home lab network rack. So one tip, you're going to want to label each of your cables and that makes troubleshooting a lot easier and it just keeps things a lot more organized. Now what I do is I try to put the name of the device corresponding to the ethernet cable coming into the keystone and if there isn't a device on it yet, I'll leave it blank. And then I have some other devices over here. Now on my network, the first 16 are going to run on a 2.5 gig internal network. The other eight are just going to run on one gig. Now everything coming into it is one gig. So the 2.5 is only internal. That's why I have my NASs and my backup devices all going to 2.5 along with my computers all going to the 2.5. So they'll be able to talk to each other. Now I also like to put the port number. So in this case, the Synology has two port. So I've got port one and port two for Synology, but it's also the patch panel port one and two, and then et cetera, et cetera. Some of them I've had to reuse. These are all the 2.5 connections. Then I've got these 17 through 24, and 20 is labeled the wrong side. I've got an open spot here on 24. It's just a lot easier knowing what's connected where. So now I need to get this put back into the rack. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install my new 2.5 gig network switch. And I'm also gonna change out the patch panel cables. I'm gonna leave the red cable there because that's the one coming out of the patch panel that's gonna then go into the 2.5 gig switch. That's my main network feed. Now because of the distance between the keystone ports on the patch panel and the ports on the 2.5 gig switch, I'm going to have to use some longer cables. So I'm going to actually loop those around so they won't be too messy. So I'm going to try to use the longer ones on the ends for the longer runs. And then I'll use the shorter six inch ones for the closer connections. Now, if you're doing this at home, don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's what a home lab is for. And this is what the final product looks like. When you do have a server rack for your home lab, try to plan ahead and have empty shelves. That way you have plenty of room for expansion as well as ventilation. So I've got the heavier equipment down at the bottom to keep it weight down and the lighter equipment heading up on the shelves. And as you can see, once you get above my TerraMaster NAS and, and DAS, I just have some storage containers on there, but that gives me plenty of room for future growth. 